In this episode, we work on improving our video captures of our railroads. Now you're saying, well, I run a throttle while I'm trying to do video. I got both things going on. And not just video, but audio also. And Colin Bohannon answers a viewer's question of the week. And we cover all this on this episode of the GN in 1970. 70s. I just want to take a quick moment to be able to show you guys how do you go live in 187 scale. I know you can look at it and go, Well, you just go to YouTube and you search how do you go live on the old Facebook. Yeah, easy enough. It's 10 seconds. If you're watching a video any longer than that, you're wasting your time. Does that include this video? Go to the page that you want. You hit live. You turn it horizontal because you don't want to do it vertically. You hide the garbage on the bottom and you hit record. Go live. Simple as that. That's how you go live. Say that again. You literally go to a page, you hit live, you hit start live video. Got it. If you hit live video when it's in the vertical position and turn it sideways, the whole picture is going to turn sideways. So you want to make sure you get that at least orientation right. Um, that's first and foremost. It's time to test your information on what you know about the Great Northern. If you don't know it, maybe you'll learn a little something here. Great Northern switchers and local engines work side by side with those other roads and transfer service to see the likes of the string of NP boxcars while running parallel to a trio of CB and Q power just shy of the SP and SB and present. We're looking at the roads which would later become the BN. Do you know where this photo was taken? Was it A. Northtown, B. Dale Street, C. Westminster, or D. Union? We'll find out after this segment. This is the Milwaukee Road uh, engine I was working on. I really liked what it turned out. And uh, here's some hopper cars. I really like the BN. A couple of things I want to show you just to give you a brief idea um, of how to get a better quality video. Uh, first things first, as soon as you hit the button, you are live. So if you're sitting here and you're like, how do I go live here? You hit that and you says, oh, I don't know what's going on here. Well, it looks like Edwin Nygaard says I ain't got any drawers on. Well, that's no good. What about my galoshes? How does he know I'm wearing my galoshes? I don't know why this guy talks the way he does, but anyways, um, as soon as you hit live, you are live. There is a delay for people on the other end. So once you've actually recorded something on your railroad over here and swung over here, seen that footage, you know, 10, 15 seconds later. So you're, you're that much off. So you start seeing questions come in. They're a little bit delayed. That's why. Keeping a few things in mind, hiding that garbage. I just hit the little arrow to get rid of it. It lets you see, you can practice before you go live, look around and make sure you get an idea of what you're seeing. As you can see, wobble vision. Nobody wants to see that because on the other end, it's going to be like, holy smokes, how many beers did this guy had? A lot. Well, in real life, you had 15 beers and you're at the ball game and you're panning around, it's going to probably, your camera is going to stay stable enough for you. But when you get into 187 scale, that little bit of movement is a lot. So you want to make sure that you stay steady. A couple of suggestions. Hold your camera. I hold it like this. I squeeze fairly tightly with my index finger and thumb. Another finger here to help stabilize it. And then I use the other two fingers and I just stabilize it on the railroad. Uh, one thing to note is the cameras are down low. You don't want to block them. But I have them down low because it gives you that low perspective. If you want to do an overpass shot, flip it over and ele elevate yourself a little. Let's see that again, Bob. Bumble Ruski. And you're going to be able to see it a little bit better. So that just gives you a couple of things that you can do to be able to stabilize yourself. I suggest also, if you hold the phone like this in your panning, hold it against your body, holding it with two hands, that helps stabilize it a lot. And I mean, it's like a gimbal or a tripod. You're literally, your body becomes the stabilizer. You can then walk and, and be able to get a lot smoother footage simply by doing this without having to buy a whole bunch of fancy technology. Consider that from a movement standpoint. Now you're saying, well, I run a throttle while I'm trying to do video. I got both things going on. Well, I suggest you set a stool next to you, do your throttle speed, slow your locomotive down, and then get into there and get a nice shot of the locomotive going by. So that helps stabilize your video. I did mention a gimbal or a tripod. Here are two things you can use to help stabilize your video. Um, the tripod itself, I'll even take my phone without the gimbal on it. And I will set it here and tape it with painter's tape. And that'll just hold the phone steady. You don't need a fancy mount. You just need it to hold it steady and then get the video that you're trying to shoot. The downside of that, much like this video here, I'm using a mic stand that just has a clamp for a microphone that's holding the phone steady. Uh, it gets kind of boring. Preaching to the choir. You're in the same spot the whole time and there's not a whole lot of movement. What makes video interesting is the dynamic elements that you can bring to it. So as you see the, the gimbal here, if you use, don't use the tripod and you do have a gimbal on hand, you can get a gimbal for, you know, a hundred bucks or around that, sometimes a little bit less on Amazon, they have them. The quality of those, in my opinion, they're not as great, but they work. 
Uh, what I've found is that you'll hear the actual gimbal running a lot of times in the cheaper ones. This one here is made by DJI. You can probably get it for under 100 now because this is an Osmo 2. They've got the Osmo 3s out and Osmo is O-S-M-O. Um, but that helps stabilize the camera. I am simply turn it on. Unhook it. And as you can see, it keeps a nice steady video. That allows me to pan real nice. The camera's steadily doing it for you. And you're not having this herky-jerky motion that you can have when you're hand holding it. So that's a gimbal. Do you need it? No. Is it nice? Absolutely. It's time to find out how well you know the locations of the GN. If you said B, Dale Street, you'd be correct. As we view a slew of NW2s, you'll see NW2-148 was assigned out of Union Yard. Here it works side by side with a trio of QNW2s at St. Paul's Dale Street Yard. If you had guessed A, North Town, that was the former Northern Pacific Yard, which is actually still used by the BNSF today. If you guessed C, Westminster, that was a tower that had a similar S-curve look near it, but that is not this location. And if you had guessed D, Union, that was a former Great Northern, that yard was huge. Boy, that's a nice steady looking video you got there. Just really got to kind of work on how the audio is sounding. I feel like the, the video is nice and steady, and it's just time to work on the audio. How about less chitter chatter and more trains running? That would improve it. How do you fix the audio? Yeah, there's a couple things you can do. First things first is shut your yapper. Once you've stabilized your video, you're gonna to wanna to move forward and actually just clean up your audio. How do you do that? A couple of things. You can use the mic that's on your phone when you're just openly talking to people on the phone. It does a decent job. Um, they do sell, uh, you have, earbuds or even ones that come with your phone that you could run up to your mouth and then has a mic hanging. I've used that in the past. It does work, but it also brushes against your face and makes weird noises in the, uh, in the background. So keep some of those things in mind. How do you clean up your audio? One thing I would suggest, this is an external mic. Uh, this is called a shotgun mic. It's made by Rode, R-O-D-E. This is the shotgun mic. This is a dead cat. It's actually just a windscreen. It stops the wind from blowing, but this is as simple as you can plug this into your phone, just like that there, and now you've got an audio recording. If you're gonna be doing any video outdoors, you can put the windscreen on, make sure it's on all the way, and then now you've got yourself the ability to be able to take video of your train going by and get good audio as it's going along, because it's actually picking it up from the direction that you point it. If you don't use one of these, consider using one of these. Uh, this is a Lavier mic or a lapel mic that you can run up your shirt, I've got one here and you can have decent audio. It can run down the floor, you have extenders, you can plug them into your phone, it, it works fairly simple, but it's a cheap and inexpensive way to be able to get good audio. Now what I'm using is I'm actually using a transmitter that's hooked onto my back pocket, and that's transmitting to my phone that has a device that's plugged into it. This is a Saramonic, it's called a Blink 500 transmitter, S-A-R-A-M-O-N-I-C. That's a transmitter that talks to the phone, it works fairly nice um, to be able to then plug this in, and now I have wireless capability for myself as well as one other person. Now that we've cleaned up our video, we've cleaned up our audio, we're gonna just clean up the railroad. That's the, the final things I wanna at least address is cleaning up your railroad, making the presentation the best you can. And to do that is get rid of a lot of odds and ends. I'm not saying you need to blast the whole thing clean and hoover it all and have it just totally spick and span, but get rid of a lot of the excess. Um, if you've got wrappers and bottles and cans and other things just laying around, it becomes a distraction. It's like, who, who, what's that? So if they see a Snickers bar in the background, the comments are gonna be, not going anywhere for a while. <laughs> You know, they're regular, wild and crazy guys. You know, the comedians come out like you wouldn't believe. As soon as they see something, they start making the comments. That's how I help avoid it. I avoid it by trying to eliminate some of that stuff. If there's something I do want to draw attention to, I leave it in there. Because if you're going to be panning along and then somebody says, oh, hey, what's with that Albany, you know, company? And then, well, you explain a little bit more about it. Well, it's not actually the Albany company. I'm actually calling this one, you know, Friesman manufacturing or whatever it's gonna be. And you can tell the story about it because you're drawing attention to it intentionally. So keep some of those things in mind when you're actually giving the tour. Um, looking at your floor and the area around you is uh, keeping it clean. Pick it up. So you don't trip over it. You don't, nobody wants to fall on their face live. Could be kind of funny. You're the comedians will come back out again, you know. He didn't see that coming. <laughs> Doing those things as simple as they are will help your video improve. 
The last thing I can leave you with is be yourself. If you're presenting and you're giving information, don't hold back. Just be who you are. Answer the questions the way you honestly feel. Um, can it cause controversy? Yeah, maybe. But I would look at it in the light of if somebody comes to you and says, well, that, that, that facility, this shouldn't be getting that 60-foot center beam there. That should, that should be getting a 40-foot box. You know, and you say to them, is this your railroad? No? Okay. Then go pound sand. Or something of that nature. The reason I say that is because I look at all, diff all railroads differently. Every railroad, you're the architect and you're the one putting in um, the pieces of the puzzle. Now, the quality of your track work, the quality of your wiring, all of those things are skills that we're acquiring as time goes along. So if there is somebody that is providing information or feedback on something to help improve a situation, I listen. If I look at somebody that, uh, you know, I know Tom, uh, Tom Gazier, he has a split rock mining company. He does phenomenal work on some of the track detail. And you look at the track up close and it's like, holy smokes, that's a lot of detail. Well, he is also a master model railroader. So when you actually walk up there and look at it and he says, you know what you could do? You could do this, that, or the other. Then you say, I could do this, that, or the other. But if you've got Larry Smalls that comes along and goes, you know what, this thing looks like crap. And you say, hey, Larry, how's your railroad coming along? Larry says, well, I ain't started it yet. Well, then that's where you need to be with your comments. You can keep them to yourself because you haven't actually done it. That's how I look at comments. I see a lot of times I post these videos. I get a lot of, uh, a lot of positive comments. I appreciate those that do. Uh, and I have one guy that happens to be dropping a thumbs down on almost every video I post. It's, it's the same guy as far as I'm concerned. Hilarious. Kudos to you. I'm, I'm really impressed. Doesn't bother me. I don't care. So you can keep hitting the thumbs down. You can make the negative comments. I, uh, I filter them out and I just take what I need as far as value because I know the quality work that I'm able to put into my railroad. So take it for what it's worth. You guys enjoy yourself. Hopefully this helps you when you go live. You're able to uh, clean up your audio clean up your video, clean up your railroad, and hopefully leave yourself with a nice railroad for others to enjoy. Goodbye. You done shoot about as good as you model. Colonel's question of the week. You think you know it all? Or are you still learning stuff? I tune into all kinds of podcasts, blogs, the interweb, I find all kinds of information on a regular basis from all my fellow modelers and that is where you learn. You don't learn anything, you're just sitting stagnant in the middle of the pond with no oars and a hole in your boat. You're gonna sink. Learn from others. Cullen's out. Hopefully you enjoyed this most recent episode of the GN in 1970, and even if you didn't, you can pop over to the channel and take a look and see if there's a video there you might like. There's the GN in 1970, the virtual tour of the GN in 1970, as well as Sue the Milwaukee Road. I want to give a huge thanks to those that have hit the like button, hit subscribe, as well as commented on various videos. It means a lot to me because we've actually connected as modelers and be able to learn different tips from one another, as well as learn about other channels and guys that are sharing content. I don't make these videos for me, I make these videos for you, so hopefully you're enjoying them and you enjoy the future episodes of the GN in 1970. 70s.